becomes a real possibility. Even contact with mission control can become a source of tension. Hey guys, sorry about the longer than normal delay, but uh, believe me, we haven't been idle down here. When you go into isolation and confinement, your world now narrows down into this little tiny space. And you are now completely dependent for communications, resources, logistics on mission control. We're still baffled by all of this as much as you are. This creates a, a tremendously complex dynamic where you need these people, but you feel that they don't understand you. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles downrange. It happened in 1973 on NASA Skylab. Too many orders from the ground, and the crew went on strike. It was a serious breakdown of command and control. Nominal Miko, Ohms 1, not required. A similar strike happened on the Russian Mir station in the 80s. That's a whole other aspect of interpersonal skills. There's the us versus them quality of the people in space versus the people at home. These missions were measured in just weeks, not the years of a Mars Odyssey. To avoid these problems, the Mars astronaut will need communication skills as much as technical ones. The medical and psychological characteristics of the astronauts will play a crucial role in the selection of the crew. Canadians Dave Williams and Chris Hadfield both became astronauts in 1992. Hadfield has been on both Mir and the International Space Station. He has the sort of hands-on experience that can help Williams find a crew for Mars. It's going to be interesting to see what we decide is the right mix of both skills and people to go. Yeah. Because, you know, do we need one doctor, four doctors, no doctors? Do we need one test pilot, four, none? Do we want it to be all men, all women? NASA is thinking of a crew of six, maybe seven people. There will be both men and women aboard, which raises a new question. What happens if astronauts mix business with pleasure? Are you holding up? I'm holding up. A NASA shuttle astronaut is in a Florida jail this morning, charged in alleged kidnapping plot. Authorities say... In 2007, space shuttle astronaut Lisa Nowak was dismissed from NASA after being charged with attempted kidnapping. Her target was a female Air Force officer who was competing for the affections of another astronaut. Top NASA official says Lisa Nowak showed no signs of instability before her arrest this week. But now the agency's taking a look at itself, seeing if it might... The press descended on NASA with questions about psychological testing. More extensive psychological examinations are required for long duration flights. Astronauts also undergo extensive medical examinations when they return from space. NOAC's case unveiled NASA's position on sex among astronauts. It's okay, as long as it doesn't get in the way of the mission. We treat astronauts as we do other federal employees within the federal government, but uh, we do not meddle into the private lives of astronauts or other employees within NASA. It happens everywhere on Earth. It'll happen on the way to Mars, and just stop worrying about it. Just let people who have the right skill set right across the board go, and, and the other problems will take care of themselves. As to the sex him itself, there's no problem. I talked with uh, Kandakova, a third Russian woman in space, and her reply to this question was absolutely perfect. She said, all depends with whom. To give you an example, when I flew to the space station, Valery Polyakov had already been there for nine months. An all-male company, and then suddenly a woman appeared. As Valerie told me, Yelena, now that you're here, I even have to shave every day. On the other hand, we're better behaved now, we swear less, and take better care of our appearance. So I'd say, indeed, women would play an important role in long-duration space travel to Mars. The Russians aren't so sure that liberal sexual values suit a Mars mission. In 1999, they conducted a 240-day isolation experiment. The subjects were would-be astronauts, all male, except one woman from Canada, Judith Lapierre. 
A few weeks into the four-month experiment at a New Year's party, the Russian commander French kissed Lapierre. The kiss caused an international incident. If this represents reality in space, I think we have a problem and we have to work on some of those issues to solve it before we're really in space. She accused him of sexual harassment. The commander said she failed to understand Russian customs. Judith truly, truly felt she had been violated. And when talking to the Russian, he truly didn't even understand why a big deal was made of this. I do believe the kiss, sexuality, uh, this whole area had uh, elements of cultural differences. Lapierre stuck it out for the remainder of the experiment with a lock on her compartment door. The Russians now say that no women will be selected for their Mars mission. I think it is not a good idea to have a mixed crew, men and women, on board the flight to Mars. I have flown with Ilana Kondakova. She performed extremely well as a human being, as a professional. But on a flight as long as a flight to Mars, the presence of a woman might cause psychological problems and tensions. Antarctica is Earth's best analogy for a Mars mission. Earlier in the 20th century, women frequently accompanied men on the voyages to the poles. Sex was considered a healthy part of expedition life. In many polar expeditions, there have, has long been a tradition ever since women have been spending the winter in the uh, Antarctic uh, of what are euphemistically called bachelor marriages. These are generally short-term relationships that last during the time on the expedition itself and then generally dissolve when the expedition ends. In 1915, Ernest Shackleton's expedition came to a halt when his ship became trapped in the ice. 28 men were now fighting for their lives, knowing that no one would rescue them. Survival depended on their teamwork and Shackleton's leadership. Shackleton made very wise decisions in the selection of his crew. He could uh, assign the right tasks to the right people. And I think we've learned a lot uh, about what a mission to Mars is going to be like based on the experience that we've had in polar environments. Antarctic temperatures plummet to minus 35 degrees. Flesh will freeze in seconds, even today. Rescue is all but impossible until spring. Like Mars astronauts, crews live in close quarters. Isolation and confinement can bring out strong emotions, even violence. Successful polar workers are self-motivated and resourceful. These exploration skills are exactly what Dave Williams is looking for. If your whole food supply has been destroyed by some catastrophe, uh, getting upset about it doesn't help the situation. So there are personality types of people who are very successful explorers. Who are the six men and women who can get along in a cramped space the size of a small apartment for years? Even if NASA and the Russians find solutions, there is no easy fix that can combat the human factor. So scientists are developing an early warning system to try to stop any conflict escalating to a point where it could threaten the mission and the crew.